name is Jason Dunn. I'm an artist in many mediums. I was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Probably around the age of two or three, we moved back down to Southern California and uh, I was raised pretty much in Rolling Heights, around that area, about 30 miles east of, of Los Angeles. After that, I went to Bakersfield for a stint. I was out there for a while through my junior high and some of my high school years. And my parents got divorced when I was nine, so I bounced back and forth. I went out to San Bernardino for a while and then back to Bakersfield. I moved around quite a bit. Other than going to LA for a while and San Pedro and, and Venice and working out there for a little bit uh, yeah, in Playa del Rey, I, I pretty much have stayed locally in the Inland Empire area, uh, Upland, you know, Rancho, Pomona area. And now I reside in, in Rancho and have a studio in Montclair. serious until probably like three or four years ago maybe around 2007 I thought I was serious you know I was trying to do right and trying to do good but one day it just clicked and you know even with me painting and airbrushing and all these different things I do graphic design illustration I finally just told myself what do I do best what am I gonna market myself as what it's gonna you know, and I just went back to my roots and I said, I love tattooing. I love all these other things and I do them as well. I'm just an artist, well-rounded. That's what I want to do, everything. But I said to myself one day, I just had no money and I was just like, man, what do I do best? I tattoo best and I like it because, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing with people and it'd be the fastest way for me to make money again. But this time, I'm gonna, something clicked in me where I just wanted to take it serious. All these good artists were coming out, you know, guys that were pushing the envelope and making more realistic work like I airbrushed. And, and, you know, I wanted to tattoo like I painted. And for so long, I was stuck in this mentality of how to do things the old school way. And then seeing all the event of these, of these guys on online that were pushing the envelope, it made me go, finally, I'm gonna start trying to push myself to that level because I know I can do that too. So I really got serious around that time and really pushed myself and started started learning how to market myself online and build my build my name that way and try to, you know, because I wasn't working for a studio at that time around any guys to really help me. I just was kind of doing it on my own and with a marketing buddy and, and, and whatnot. So I would just spend every waking moment studying that, studying everybody else's work out there in the world on the internet. That's a, the internet's been a godsend to me, you know, for any artist for that matter in the last few years. It's really changed tattooing when the artists, when artists and true artists, artists got involved in the tattoo scene and everybody let down their guard and all the biker, old bikers and those kind of that kind of old carnival mentality of tattooing kind of shifted, you know, things just changed somewhere along the line. And when these different artisans got in that were willing to share information, it was more at my speed. For a long time, I hated tattooing. It didn't, there, people, 
and I ventured more towards the airbrushing because everybody in the airbrushing field was very generous and kind with their, uh, it was more my crowd because they were offering up help and advice. They didn't care about uh, somebody trying to take their money or, or s step on their ground or whatever. And then when, they, when I saw that the tattoo scene was finally starting to get it, you know, that, hey, if this guy gets better over here than me, it's not a, it's not a competition. It's actually, we should all be friends and help each other get better, you know, because there's still only a handful of us in the big picture that can truly do this. Everybody wants to be a tattooer, but only a handful of them are good. So once the world of tattooing started to do that, I started to get rid of some of my anger towards it, I guess. Especially after my apprenticeship was pretty long and hard and really rough on me mentally. So once I got rid of that, I, I really wanted to buckle down and get serious about what I wanted to do. I decided to start niching myself in this big Japanese Asian sort of Eastern sort of artwork that I just truly love to do and put my you know American white boy twist on it so to speak and then I started to get dive even deeper and starting to learn the culture and understand all the different meanings of why we're getting these tattoos even though I don't always follow all the meanings in my tattoo work, at least I know when I can educate my customers on what these meanings are and behind some of the folklore and why we're getting these big pieces. Because for years I always asked myself, man, I only get to do these small little pieces. How do these guys get to do these big sleeves and big bag pieces and stuff? And it just clicked with me one day. I just started drawing that stuff and then just started telling people, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. And then I did a few pieces and it clicked for me. I got and I got serious man and I'm like and I'm really serious about it and now it's just it's exciting time because I don't feel like I've been tattooing for what 16 18 years and now I just feel like I've had a like I'm born again with art like I, this this is actually I feel like I'm just being just getting going I just started my studio we're building my crew around me of people that I want around me I feel like I'm just getting started in this industry even though I've been doing this God forever consider me, I don't know, better at this age, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think I'm just getting going, man, I'm just getting started.